Dear learner, welcome to the NIOS course on sociology. Today we are going to discuss two of the very basic and important concepts of sociology that is norms and value. Norms and values is a very fundamental concept of sociology and for a student of sociology it is very important to understand. These are also one of the constituent concepts of sociology. So, the objective of the today's discussion would be to understand the meaning of norms and values, objectives of norms and values, then different forms of norms and values and what happens when there is no norms in the society and that would lead to a normlessness. So, that we will discuss in today's lecture. So, what is norms uh, and how do we understand norm? What is norm? That is the most important basic concept. So, you understand you know we as a part of society follow certain rules and regulations, certain guidelines, directions to our conduct and behavior and that is what is defined as a norms. Simply if we define norms is a guideline and direction to our behavior which help us to perform our day to day conduct and behavior in a society. For example, when you as a student enter into a class, you are supposed to wish to your teacher that is a commonly accepted norms in a society. We wish our elders and if someone helps us, we also say thanks to uh, our friend whosoever is helping us. That is a common courtesy and norms in our society. Norms are shared in nature right? and if I believe something is right and if some guidelines are given to me as a part of society, the same meaning is un understood by the others as well. For example, I believe that as a part as a part of class in the class, I have to say good morning or good afternoon to a teacher, the other students sitting in the class would also believe the same thing. So, norms you can call it as an unwritten rule of society. These are unwritten, but accepted by each and every member of the society and understood in a similar way. So, these are understood, unwritten and shared in nature. right? So, this is simply meaning of norms and it is just a direction to our behavior in the society. Now, norms are of you know it could be a personal norm or a social norm. No personal norm is that whatever you believe whether you want to wish your teacher or not that is up to you, but there are social norms which we all believe. So, sociology and sociologists are basically concerned about social norms. We are basically concerned about that what are the common directed directions you know guidelines to our behavior in a society, how we should behave in a society, how we should cloth ourselves you know that is accepted norm that is different in Indian society and in a western society. So, personal norms and social norm, but basically we as a student of sociology are much more concerned about the collective directions you know to the individual members of society which is called a social norm. Now, social norm since it is a very important for the functioning of the society, without norms or a social norms it is impossible to think of the society, there will be a chaos in the society. For example, you as a student wake up early in the morning and after you know you follow certain routine and then reach to the college right and in the college there are certain lectures and periods which are arranged and you are supposed to attend these lectures right. This is a commonly accepted kind of norm. Suppose you wake up sometime in the early morning and you do not know what to do right, then it will be like a chaos. Now, you meet someone, you know that you have to wish your elder or you know say something if there is no directed uh, guidelines what you have to do in a common situation then what you will do there will be a chaos right so society always assure that commonly accepted norms are should be implemented and each and every member of the society should accept these norms and follow these norms so for that assuring that acceptance of the norms there is a sanction as well right if as a member of society, you follow the norms, then you will be rewarded and if you do not follow the norms, you will be penalized. Let us take an example of a classroom again. As a student, you are supposed to follow the instruction of a teacher, you need to you know appear in examination, okay. you, you need to complete your lessons whatever given by a teacher and you have to maintain certain behavior in a class. right? 
uh, a friendly behavior and disciplinary behavior right so that is what school will promote always and if someone or some student follow these routines you know that student will be rewarded he may be a considered as a student of the year right some kind of rewards are uh, will be given and that is also sanction sanction can be positive or negative right if you do not follow that instruction the accepted norms you may be penalized you know you may be fined or given a kind of penalty by the school so these sanction may be positive or negative now sanctions are also informal or formal in nature for example again taking the example of a school if you you follow certain behavior right to so certain norms and that norms are considered as good or bad whatever the institution will reward you accordingly if you follow that norms to uh, the school or institution would also appreciate and give you certain kind of reward if you do not follow you may be penalized but on the other hand for example you are walking on a road and you are helping someone or some older person to cross the road okay and there is no one there is no institution you can skip also you cannot help also but you help that old guy you know old person who wants to cross the road so what happen the person standing nearby may appreciate you clap or give a smile so that is also kind of sanction that is also positive positive sanction but there is no formal formality right the person may not meet you next time so society always you know need a kinds of norm and sanctions assure whether you follow or you know it assures whether you follow or not right if you follow you will be rewarded if you do not follow you may be penalized right so now let us discuss the characteristics of norm till now we have discussed the meaning of norms then we did discuss about personal and social norms then we discussed about sanctions which are positive negative and formal and informal in nature right now what is what are the characteristics of after having this discussion what do you think norms are what are norms right what are the three four characteristics if you have to draw okay so the characteristic would be that these are a very natural part of a society this would exist anywhere any society you talk of you will find norms there in any norms may be different right for example norms regarding how you have to interact with the teacher how you have to uh, you know interact with your elders the norms may be different but norms do exist in each and every society norms always have a context as i said that norms may vary across the society right norms are there but the guidelines how you have to behave may vary right so these are always contextual in nature now the third one the very important characteristics of norm what we discuss is norms are always backed by sanctions in each and every society whether you talk about indian society whether you talk about western society or whatever there will always be a sanction behind the norms so these are the three very important uh, characteristics of a uh, norm you may draw some more characteristics but these are the fundamental characteristics of any kinds of norm now if i ask you whether norms are important for a society or not right so what would be the importance of a norm if if someone ask you tell us what are the importance of norms whether norms are needed or not if there is no norm then what will happen so norms are essential and very very important for the society right look while we do some examples i told you you know how it pattern your life it gives you a ready made guidelines how you have to behave it gives you a direction you need not to think again and again right now in certain situations so norms when we talk about importance it keeps consistency and clarity to you how you have to behave as a part of a society right that is a very important constituent of you know the society and that what makes norms a very important and essential from any kind of society right and therefore norms keep cohesion solidarity to the society if there is no norms in a class if there is no norm in a family so we'll behave differently personally and that might lead to a conflict of interest sometime if there is accepted norms then we may not 
have any kind of conflict, we know what we are supposed to do and accordingly we will perform our duties and responsibilities, whatever our role is, right? As a, as a father, as a brother, as a sister, as a son, whatever our role, whether we are a part of a school. So, each of these institutions and organizations has certain kind of demands and certain kind of normative guidelines and that makes for us to behave accordingly and that makes it very easy for us also, right? Now, consider a situation, uh, for example, a classroom, right? You enter into a classroom and there is no guideline given to you. There is no guideline, you do not know how to behave in a classroom and what it leads to? It will lead to a certain kind of conflict, right? The conflict of uh, role between teacher and a student, who has to teach, who has to learn, how the, how the student has to behave in a class, that will be a, you know, lot of, you know, anomaly will result into, out of this order because there is no norms and guidelines. For example, let us take the example of a family. No family has a certain hierarchy, right? There is a father, a mother, elder brothers, sisters, then their grandparents, right? So, accordingly, we each of us has a certain kind of rules and duties within a family and the normative situation says that when we have to take certain kind of decisions, we are supposed to have a discussion with parents, you know. So, we have a particular way of behavior within the family also. If that does not exist, that again will be a chaos and it be, will be a probable kind of threat to the institution of a family. So, that normlessness one of very important kind of threat to any kind of institution and guidelines given in the form of norms keep these institution organizations in a very cohesive order, right? Now, after having a discussion with the characteristics of norms, right? Now, let us discuss what are the types of norms, whether we have different forms of norms or not, right? So, sociologists have discussed, uh, you know, in different literature you will find sociologists are discussing different forms of norms, right? But here we will limit to ourselves to three, four important uh, types of norms which are very popular, right? And these are norms, for example, the first category which is very popularly known as norms is prescriptive and proscriptive, right? Prescriptive is that one which is prescribed to you, you have to behave in a very particular way within a family or let us take an example of a school, okay? you have to behave within a particular kind of, you have to maintain a particular kind of behavior or a action, right? That is prescriptive to you. And proscriptive is one when there is no prescription is given, right? There is no prescription and you can refrain the prescriptive order because there is nothing, no, no guideline is given. So, it means you have your own personal choices, right? And again, there is a one more type of norms which is called communal versus associational. Now, communal kind of norm exist everywhere, it is like almost universal in nature. For example, you meet your friends and you meet someone for the very first time, what you will do? Most of the time we, we say hello or we shake hand, right? And whether it is in India, whether it is in Europe, anywhere across the world, the same kind of behavior is maintained, we always wish, right? This is a communal kind of norm. Now, there is also associational kind of norm and associational kind of norm exist among a set of, you know, communities or groups. For example, sacred thread kind of, you know, norm, uh, which only higher caste people in India, you know, perform the ritual performance where they have a sacred thread and this kind of norm exists only among higher especially among the Brahmins in India. So, so you, you cannot find it in Europe or you know other communities, even within India you won't find across the communities. So, this is very associational, like exist across certain communities and association, this is associational. Now, norms are also discussed in three different varieties as well, right? And this is very important and it needs to be dealt in detail in a, some other discussion and these are called folkways, modes and customs. These are also three different ways of norms. No, folkways as the name itself shows, it is the way of life of a community. For example, any community you say, you visited, you see a tribal community or a modern 
community living in a metropolitan area, they have a way of life, right? That is called as folk way. It can be anything, right? From morning to evening, whatever kind of behavior, action they perform, that is folk, folk ways. Now, there is a one more kind of norm which is called mores. And mores is that which is accepted as good, right? Which is acceptable form of behavior within a community or a society. So, you, you perform different kind of roles uh, from morning to evening, but from out of all these roles, from morning to evening, there are certain kind of actions you perform which are objectionable, right? Which are not accepted. And there are certain kind of action which are accepted by everybody. So, that could be called as modes, right? And there is a one more concept which is called custom and custom is also be called as a one more type of norms and customs are basically patterned way of life. Now, patterned way of life, what is patterned way of life? For example, you as a part of any community or society perform certain rituals, certain kind of you know festivals that have been performed by your forefathers also, your parents also and your children will also perform. That is a routinized pattern of behavior you know perform over a period of time. So, this is called custom. So, these are the three types of you know uh, norms we have discussed prescriptive versus proscriptive. Then we did discuss about communal and associational and third one we discussed folkways, modes and customs. So, let us uh, just for a moment summarize norms only what we discussed norms you know. Norms are essential for community, for society without which it is very difficult to imagine about a society and it is shared. Norms may vary from across society to society, but we all always have a norm, right? And it has different typologies. We discuss three important typologies and characteristics we discuss it provide a very kind of cohesiveness and solidarity to the society. Now, the next concept is values. Norms and values are usually discussed together, right? So, that is why we are taking it together also. Now, what are values? You discuss when you read in your literature, you will be to some extent student get confused what is the difference between norms and values. There is a very you know sharp difference. For example, while discussing norms, we said that norms are general guide uh, you know directions or guidelines to your behavior, right. You have to do within this situation some kind of behavior you have to maintain. Now, values are broader in nature. These are the journal guidelines. Okay. These are the journal guidelines and out of values you can derive so many norms. So, is it clear? Right. From values number of norms comes out. So, we will take certain examples how to understand, but the first the one definition of value which I have taken from Harlambus themes and perspective. It says that values provide more general guidelines. A value is a belief uh, that something is good and desirable. It defines what is important, worthwhile and worth striving for. So, that is what is called as value system, right? Now, as I said that values are broader in nature and within uh, values gives birth to number of norms. So, one value will give birth to so many norms. Or norms are very specific in nature, right? So, for example, in a Western society, again taking example from uh, themes and perspective Harlambus, is it says that in a Western society, individuality and achievement are given lot of importance. As an individual, your individuality is very important and achievement is very important. That is why people are in competition with each other and to top within the class, then after getting good grades and marks, you have to get a very good job and earn as much as possible, right? Material resources you have to collect and these are the norms. This is the value system which actually govern the western society. No, what would be the norms coming out of it? The norms are like that, you have to do lot of hard work, right? You have to always compete with your colleagues and you are always be very careful, very serious about your future and you know job opportunities and all that. So, these are the norms coming out of uh, the major value of individuality and achievement. Again, let us take one more example. 
of value system the value system of you know individual dignity and importance to life this is the value system right now out of this the norms would be health and hygiene right because if there is no health and hygiene that is a threat to your life right so you have to maintain cleanliness you have to maintain your neighborhood clean right and apart from that if you dialogue if you are if you are discussing or resolving certain conflict so you have to be very polite and humble and listen so that physical violence and you know quarrel should be avoided that is a probable threat to your life so these kind of norms you know come sort of a broader value of you know uh, importance to life so these two examples makes very clear that value system is broader in nature and within that normative directions comes out and as a part of society whether indian society or a western society we follow it now like norms what is the importance of a value system it is same right it is not different you know mainly it is same that it provides again stability if there is no value system you are born as a member of society and you do not know what you are supposed to do so you will have your own values and another person will also have its own values that might have a clash right so broader values provide stability and cohesiveness as we have discussed in the norms norms also perform the same function but norms are the subset of value system okay uh, values gives birth to norms so it is a subset of so but they almost perform the same function the next one is that what are the characteristics of value this is again not very uh, different from the norm what we discussed uh, just now so values are actually a matter of faith and belief right now the value like individuality and achievement this is one of value system of a western society but as a individual you may not believe in competition it is possible right you may not believe in competition you say that as a part of class i do not believe in competition i will just focus on my learning and that is more important and that is a value system in indian society actually not to compete to some extent you know to focus on your studies and that is what also uh, the modern pedagogy also promotes do not compete with your colleagues but compete with yourself learn yourself and decide your own choices right so that that that's why value system may be a broader in nature but in within value system you may have different kind of you know value within the same value system so it is a matter of faith and belief also and it, it is very journal in nature because it is a journal guideline and specifically norms only give you a direction right and values are relatively permanent in nature it may change it is not nothing is permanent actually it may change value system keeps on changing for example the so we'll take uh, example of an indian society to discuss the value system for example often literature discuss conflict in the value system look the older the the ancient indian society had a different value system and the modern indian society has a very different value system so we will discuss three value systems like hierarchy holism and democracy look early the indian society was hierarchical in nature we used to have a brahman kshatri vaishya shudra kind of hierarchical system accordingly groups were arranged and we used to get a status according to our position in the caste hierarchy now the modern society is democratic in nature we are no, it prohibit untouchability and casteism and hierarchy the democratic value are exactly different from the hierarchical system of indian society so the earlier value system and the present value system now are in conflict with each other right so what i said that value itself changes and sometime the early value system of society and the present value system of society conflict with each other so that leads there is a intergenerational kind of conflict also in the value system the earlier generation uh, you know our fathers or forefathers used to believe in a family you know system where we used to take permission from our family members elders now the younger generation is much more individual in nature they take their own decision so it is a value clash and conflict you know the value keeps on conflicting clashing with each other now what are the kinds of value like we discuss in norms different types of norm no there are different value system also and different value system gives birth to so many norms also values 
the most important kind of value or type of value is moral value. It gives direction to our moral behavior, right? And another is very important, prominent is rational value, which is scientific and logical. If you have to succeed in your life, you have to do a hard work. The normatic value is to do a hard work, right? It is called a rational value. Then there is also variant value, the third form. Uh, the variant form is that you choose your own value and accordingly you behave, right? Each one of as an individual has our own value system and accordingly uh, we are behaving, uh, you know, and deciding our own trajectory, right? And there is a dominant value, fourth kind of category. Dominant value is that which is predominant in society and each one of us believes, right? For example, not stealing, not killing anyone, not lying. These are dominant value, no one would say these are wrong. So friends, uh, we discussed today, we started from norms and we ended with values. We did discuss about meaning of norms, meaning of values, then types of norms and types of value. Now, we also discussed that what is the relation between norms and values. Norms and values are coherently related, very important for society and value is a broader in nature and norms comes out of the value system, okay? And it gives direction to norms, it gives guidelines for the norms and norms give direction to our behavior. So I hope you have understood the concept of norms and value. Thank you.